TV. The truth lives here. Hey guys, this is the Classic Nine from Phone for Ground Fans. I'm here with Mr. Jack Hellman. Mm -hmm. All right. So, how have you been, Jack? Uh, I'm good. Thank you for having me, Alec. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right. So, uh, he's the producer of the GBTV show BS of A, and he works alongside with uh, with Brian Sack and uh, and uh, more notably, uh, I assume you're leading me onto this, Glenn Beck. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's I have age. an unanswered. Glenn just emailed me on Friday night, and I have I have yet to respond to him. Mm -hmm. He is a, a, just a funny, crazy email. He is an interesting fella. Yeah, that sounds like it. So how's the how's the transition from him going to Texas working out with everything in the studios? Well, it's interesting. Um, not ha Glenn is such a uh, such a powerhouse figure. He's um he's such an he's uh. He's inspiring. He's a sort of like a a leader of men, a, sort of like a a patent who, when he's around, you can't help but want to do better. First of all, he's the nicest guy in the world. It's, I mean, just the sweetest, funniest, greatest guy in the world. So, but he also just has this powerful energy that you know, um, you know, when he is in your office, you you know it. He just has this energy and this intensity of wanting to succeed and do well and. And he listens to everyone when they speak, and there's just this real, real energy. And with him gone, that, that's a vacuum. You know, it's he's fun to have around. I miss having him in sketches because that's uh, the, you know as good a cameo as you can get. But I, I'll just really miss having him around the offices. Just as he makes you want to do a better show, just because he's a cool guy. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to transition to the Nets fun question. This should be. Uh, would you call a Brian Sack replacement for him at all? Well, and that's what that's yeah, that's where we left off. That it's amazing that um, it, you run into the same problems here. You know, people. And you know, I've run into people, some people who don't want to work with Glenn Beck, so they'll say no. They don't want any anything to do with Glenn, even though we're doing a sketch that's not political. It's not, you know, it's not one side or the other. But they just automatically, you know, don't want to do anything involving Glenn. You have other people who are just lazy or you know like you're some of your i don't know if your sleeping friends are lazy but they're at least sleepy once um, he wakes up it's actually a whole different story he's actually pretty active until he gets hungry and that's it and then until he's hungry right right uh so it's like yeah we were i run into the same problems man i feel you mm -hmm. so uh uh who so you say like who is like because obviously you have like a staff and stuff who is probably like the biggest critic you have on the BSFA like that says, oh, you know, this gets going to fail or it's not going to work or anything. Do you have like someone like that on this team? Um, no, everyone's pretty positive. Also, everyone's really honest. I mean, that's the only way I would run a show is, I mean, there are sketches that you guys have never seen mm -hmm. that we have shot. We thought they were funny on the page and either we were wrong or – we didn't execute it well or, you know, some circumstance arose that um, made it not funny. And I'm not going to air something that's not funny. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, or at least to the best of my ability. I mean, everyone swings and misses every once in a while. But um, so we're pretty honest. I mean, if something's not good, we'll tell each other. We'll, you know, we'll kill sketches. We'll kill material. Um, no, everyone's uh, – it's a very positive staff. We, we're a small staff. Including myself and Brian, the host. It's just seven of us. So I mean, seven people doing a half-hour weekly comedy show. Mm -hmm. A heck of just, a lot of work. Just to fill like two and a half uh, minutes of just footage took like five hours. So I definitely know what you mean because it's like tossing back ideas and stuff. It can become uh, very tiresome and challenging. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I know the worst skit, as they say, but actually did pretty well and it received like people were actually laughing, but uh, they didn't want to do it because it was pretty much idiotic. Uh, we called it Calculator Man. It's me chasing the. We put this in our uh, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, video. It was like a 45 uh -huh. minute. We put in that like live action skits and stuff. That took a long time to do, but uh, when we were doing it, uh, it was just you know, instead of like being at Freddy or uh, or Jason. It is mm -hmm. a guy with a calculator, and he's saying, you want to do some math problems? He's chasing one guy down the street and uh, yelling, like, you want to do multiplication and stuff like that. And uh, mm -hmm. they uh, thought it was dumb, but actually when we had a third person look at it, they, that was one of the points where they cracked up during the video. So Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's how it's going to work, boy. The, the only way you can test comedy is by putting it in front of people. I learned stuff from an I I've had I had my own TV show in college, so I've been putting material up in front of audiences for almost 20 years. Um, that's a long time, and um, that's the only. I, and I still to this day, I audiences will teach me things that I didn't know. They will surprise me. Well, you like that joke, really? Because the the funny joke is the third one, and that didn't get anything. You like the first one, the easy joke, the fart joke, really? Okay, I guess. And you and you just always learn. Audiences will always teach you. It's it's one of the most exciting things about comedy. Mm -hmm. That really is. Uh, hmm. Got a pretty good question over here. I'm just gonna... Yeah. So uh, here's a good question. I I took a little time to do this and uh, like uh, as I was like telling you about like if there was anyone that like really inspired you and you obviously said the one person and uh. Was there like a favorite TV show you used to watch back in the days that you would like to say, you know, if I could become a writer, I would like to write for this show. Was there ever one? Um, hmm. I mean, Late Night with David Letterman was always my dream, but um, I think everyone who gets into comedy wants to go and work at Saturday Night Live. I mean, that's that's the gold standard, you know, Whatever you you think of it now, you know, um, you know everyone has their generation, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like the the first cast with you know Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Chevy Chase and all those guys, um, John Belushi. You know, some people will say that was the best, and you know, my generation will say, oh no, it was the Mike Myers, you know, Dana Carvey, Phil Hartman group. David Spade, Chris Farley, that was the funniest. Then some people say, you know, the Will Ferrell era was the funniest. And everyone just has such ownership of that show that um, – and and everyone has an opinion of it because it's such a cultural force. And that's mm – -hmm. if you're in comedy, you want to work at Saturday Night Live. So that's what I always wanted to do, and I worked at Saturday Night Live for three years. So mm -hmm. I guess that worked out. Mm -hmm. uh, 97 to 2000. Mm -hmm. Those are good years. Yeah, definitely. My my two best friends write for the not my two best friends, two of my close friends from college write all the WWE. I know really? the two writers who do all the WWE. Seriously, a kid who came from a farming town, a farming town in way upstate New York by up by Lake Ontario. Um, we have a corn festival every year. That's how small my little town was. My graduating class was sixty nine kids. Um, super small school. I worked for. By the time I was 22, I worked for Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien, and um, got a job at Saturday Night Live. That's cool. A little – I'm nobody. The reason I got those internships is because I applied. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So uh, I go back to that with the college stuff. You, mm -hmm. uh, We uh, did a Facebook conversation before this, and uh, – I was talking about how you did like a game show in college, so like where you reviewed games and you got like a game a week or something review. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Uh, no, that wasn't in college. That was after I graduated. Oh, that was um, uh, Lauren Michaels had a college television network. Um, it's called Burley Bear. You should Google it if you are so inclined. And um, you know, so it was like streamed into college into 400 campuses across the nation, and it's a sort of deal. And then by the time I got there, they struck some sort of deal with TBS to air a block of programming like in late night. So when they struck that deal, Lauren Michaels, the producer of Center Live, who I'd worked with, you know, um, I, I sort of got sent over to Burley Bear to produce this video game review show. It was um, the Siskel and Ebert of video games. Uh, it was called Dave and Steve's Video Game Explosion. Man, it was awesome. Um, first of all, it was a good show. Those guys are super funny. Harvard Lampoon guys, 
uh, Saturday Night Live writers, uh, Seinfeld writers. Um, one of them, Dave Mandel, has written the Cat in the Hat movie. Um, all sorts of, you know, got some multi-million dollar deal with DreamWorks or whatever. Really funny dudes. And, uh, man, I would get two, two to three free video games a week in the mail. Just like, oh, here's a FedEx envelope from Electronic Arts. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> awesome, man. That was awesome. Just I still have a stack of them at home. Just awesome. a ton of video games. Great. Was there ever, like, a favorite video game you ever had? Like, ever? Um, man, I, this is old school, dude, but Legend of Zelda. Any Legend of Zelda is where it's at. Oh, the first one, the NES Legend one. one. Legend of Zelda, the mm-hmm. first one. I mean, they're, they're all great. Um, Legend of Zelda was was my favorite game. I'm playing um, the first Batman Arkham Asylum now when I get it, when I have time. That's cool. Sick, uh, so good. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this poster right here where my hand is right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a uh, Zelda Majora's Mask from like the N64. I actually kept that from Oh, yeah. Back if you can see, it's like Skull Kid on Clock Tower and stuff. Yeah. That would bring it up uh, oh. on the pins. is like annoying to get out. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah oh, God. Uh, I, I'm sorry. And for speaking of video games, I, I got super addicted to Warcraft. Oof. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, that was rough. I don't know. My, uh, I think my addiction was uh, back in like maybe 1999, wherever it came out, StarCraft. Oh, God. That was a great game. I know. Man. So was- good. Oh. Mm-hmm. So good. Definitely. Uh, hmm. Was there ever a game that you hated the most? Like you just couldn't stand because it was like just flat out terrible or you just like had the worst memories of it? Um, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I've played a ton of bad games. I, this wasn't necessarily the worst game that um, that I ever played, but... I, I distinctly remember hating, um, I think it was Final Fantasy X that came out in 2001 or two because it was nothing but cutscenes. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, you play the, video, play the game for like 10 minutes and then it's 10 or 15 minutes of cutscenes. If I want to watch a movie, I put one in, man. Why don't I play a game? So, and then you couldn't skip it. Like, you're, pu- you know, you're just pushing the buttons and stuff. And again, this is like 2002, so I, you know, I think maybe you're allowed to skip more cutscenes than maybe you were back then. But, oh, just let me play a game. God. I got a question. Have you ever played Metal Gear Solid at all? Played what? Metal, Metal Gear Solid. Oh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, That's no. I've, the seven cut I've wanted to. Oh, right, right. Mm-hmm. No, I've so, always wanted to. I haven't. So, uh, yeah, that's another one. But uh, I got to say one of the worst I've ever played, just because uh, it's just bad and literally uh, the game's like broken as anything. I just saw it and I saw someone playing as like, no, I don't. I, I feel like trying this game out when I, it seems fun. Uh, Superman N sixty four. The game is. Uh, have you ever tried it? Like, have you ever tried um, the game? Which game? Superman for the N sixty four. Oh no, really? No. Uh, yeah, the game was. Uh, it was made by like a small company that somehow managed to get the license of the game, and yeah. they literally made a game that was. Uh, you could fly through the walls, and it was really cheaply made i guess because uh when once they presented the project to uh warner brothers or something they didn't like all the violence in it and they only had like a month to change it and they quickly pretty much watered it down and it became a huge mess yeah that's crazy mm-hmm. yeah that's that sounds completely believable that sounds like something they would do mm-hmm. yeah definitely uh i guess uh hmm i know i got another question uh somewhere around yeah but here's a good one yeah, all right. Here's a good one. What system have you? Uh, what system? What systems do you still have? If you have any? Um, I've got uh, PlayStation Three, mm-hmm. um, which is great for the Blu-ray as well. Uh, let's see. What else do I? Have? I've got. I've got an Xbox, but not an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. I have a Wii. I have my PC, which I play games on, mm-hmm. which we're on right now. Um, I want to get an iPad. I want to get enough sponsors for the BS of A mm-hmm. um, that we keep taking their money and don't give it to Glenn or the network. Uh, so I want to get enough sponsored money that, uh, to buy myself an iPad. Mm-hmm. So that's the next plan because <laughs> we have enough money for our steak dinner now, um, which we're going on next week, which will be fun. Uh, let's see. I think that's – oh, and I have an old um, NES, but it's not hooked up right now. Oh, and I have the um, – like three or four years ago, my manager got me the um, – the old Atari 
like the the new Atari, but with all the old games, like the Atari bundle for you know forty bucks or whatever, which came preloaded with seventy games or something, sort of like super old school, like when I was a two you know five year old type of stuff. It's fun, but I have that. Yeah, I grew up during the uh, well. Actually, I remember playing NES games, Super NES games, and N sixty four. But N sixty four was like the main bulk of when I grew up, and so. Right. At least the games probably weren't as bad as back then when third parties could just quickly throw it in and didn't even be li- need to be licensed by anyone. They could just... Because literally, uh, I remember I was watching a video of how Atari could make porn, uh, porn games and stuff and it could just throw it out there. Like, mm-hmm. Just like you would... Unsuspectingly, it could be like Carnal Mustard and like something and it would be like a porno game about how Carnal Mustard has to rape someone against a cactus. And you get points for... That sounds like every game I play, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Raping someone against the cactus. That's horrible. <laughs> it makes a good pun. I love it. It's great. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and the Jew made their, that game was actually made. So that's even the better part. You need to send me that link. I will. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of them, and they were pretty bad. Like, uh, beat them and eat them. Oh, God. Uh, I can only imagine. Philly Flasher. The whole point of that game is to go around and break into people's houses and rape them. Jeez. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Could you believe it was that you, you actually control a female during that game and you're supposed to break into males' homes and rape them? Wow. So it was kind of interesting. So yeah. Wow. I've sired so many children that way. Um, okay, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what else? So whatever got you, I'm not sure if I did ask this before, but uh, whatever really got you to become like a like creative writer, because obviously you could have became anything, but uh, why did you choose that? Uh, like a TV produ- uh, TV writer, radio uh, writer. What did you make? What made you choose that? Um, I love making an audience laugh. Mm-hmm. So you know something. I've done some film stuff. We I, I released a movie. It's um, which is on iTunes. Everyone should go buy it. It's called "May the Best Man Win: A Story of Two Best Friends Competing to Be Their Best Man at Their Third Friend's Wedding," um, with some good, funny people in it. Uh, but I mean, like movies take so long. You know, it takes a year or more to make a movie and everything. And there's something about television that you know, if you're on a, a daily show or a weekly show, you can you know get that your fix you can get that audience laugh and there's there's no feeling in the world like making an audience laugh it's the best thing ever so that was what sold me was the ability to make people laugh mm-hmm. definitely i know when we uh, come up with their skits it's uh kind of interesting because the one scene like I, I told you with especially with a guy one that's in, still in high school and the other one's college and he's like you know i need to make sure i don't like ruin my book career or anything so uh I want to be careful of that so like someone would check on the internet and they see me get in the bed with two other guys. They they don't want to be seen and stuff like that. I'm right. like, no, no, no. You know it's funny. You know, three guys just walking in and just hopping in the bed and then they have random nightmares with Freddy and all the other stuff. Uh, I know they definitely had fun in my nightmare thing, which was like I get uh, tapped by bread. Uh, okay. One guy was supposed to throw a whole bunch of loaves at me. And uh, the first two actually really, uh, literally knocked me off my feet because he was having his fun at that. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's all in good fun, man. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about doing this is that it's the most fun being in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. Super fun. It's hard work. You know, you won't get paid a lot to start out. You, you know, it's really really hard. But boy, is it fun. No, I definitely have to ask this question. I was kind of saving this uh, for like me or the engine stuff. How how do most people usually take it when you have to say, you know, I work for Glenn Beck at GBTV? Um, well, especially in New York, mm-hmm. where and in the entertainment industry, both of those are two very liberal uh, things. Uh, you get some you get some strong reactions. Some people are flabbergasted, like they just can't believe it they you know it, it doesn't even it, it blows their mind they just can't believe it um some people sort of go into attack mode they just assume like sometimes if you read the comments on our sketches that get posted 
like clearly the people haven't watched the sketch. They just will start, you know, that's why you can't read stupid posts on the internet, mm-hmm. but um, they'll just, you know, say hateful things just because it's Glenn. Mm-hmm. They won't watch it just, oh, conservatives can't do comedy. Well, you're just assuming that the person who wrote, you know, we're the staff of seven people. Do you think all of them are hardcore right wing conservatives? So how do you know who wrote what and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and who, you know, it's a nonpartisan show. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's interesting to, to fight the battle for, um, for comedy, but, you know, people will, um, we'll have people, we'll contact actors. Mm-hmm. We'll get to a certain point where they're like, yeah, great. Sounds good. These are actors, mm-hmm. actors, you know, it's not like, you know, Morgan Freeman, who's in everything. These are like struggling people who work waitressing jobs to pay the bills. You call them up for a thing and they hear that it's gone back and they'll say no. Really? Because there's, they hate them so much. So it's, it's a, it can be a challenge. Um, that's so you get some strong reactions when you tell people you work for Glenn, but you know, there's no one who treats his employees better. No one who treats people better when you're with him. So people can think whatever they want. Glenn is, Glenn is going to be all right. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I know uh, it's kind of hard, uh, especially uh, being, especially like 18 and like saying like, Oh, you know, uh, I subscribe to like, uh, cause I subscribe to uh, GBTV and uh, stuff. And uh, like when I like, say like stuff like that, like history facts, like, kids that are like in u.s history right now like what i never learned about like black tom or anything and stuff like that i'm like well it's like all this stuff like where'd you get this from i go uh the uh internet on gbtv and they say oh who's uh hosting i was like i i just keep ducking the question because i don't want to say that because once you say that it's like well that's an incredible resource you can't say stuff like that it's just regardless whatever it's like you could go on wikipedia and see the same exact thing but there's just nothing i'm learning in school or anything because i never learned about black tom or anything right Mm-hmm. Yeah, well then, you know, keep keep spreading the word. You don't have to you don't have to give sources. You just saw it on the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's such a good person. Mm-hmm. He people are people couldn't be more wrong about him. Definitely. He's he is the greatest guy. He is just so such a true person. Anyway. I think that's how he comes off cuz uh, cuz I know especially with your skit, especially you really uh cuz I even show it to it and uh, some of my friends and whatnot and they had like I show uh with like the Republican debates, so I was like debates, 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 and yeah, Perry the Magic Trout, and they'll, they'll crack it up <laughs> and stuff. Good, yeah, especially that. Yeah, that got really good. Uh, with Perry the Magic Trout just flying out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, that was great. Our our editor Rob did a great job with that. Does a really good job. Oh, good. Yeah, it's funny. Glenn showed Glenn played that on his radio show, and mm-hmm. um, it was fun to listen to them listen to it it was, it was fun yeah because i know uh personally i know who i'm planning on voting for for the election i actually just signed up so hopefully it will work so i can vote in the primary and whatnot whenever they come around to pennsylvania which i think we're near the end but mm-hmm. then we only have like probably two people and by then it'll probably be god who knows uh hopefully i, I don't know but uh like you guys definitely went out after like newt um with uh newt or newt and uh uh-huh. And uh, the other people and whatnot. And so, like, I really, like, especially because I'm just going to say from, like, a, just looking at, it, like, a perspective, you guys definitely have gone after, like, I would probably, like, say at least 75 to 25, like, set, you've attacked, cur- uh, like, Republicans more. Like, you've attacked them, like, 75% more than, like, Democrats. Like, when you did, like, the Penn State scandal, I would consider that attacking, like, the liberals and uh, right. stuff like that, I guess. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, definitely, I don't know where, like, that's kind of, like, as you said, uh, it's kind of like unfounded. Like they don't even watch the videos and they just post hate comments. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's funny when you're a political comedy show, what else are you supposed to do when there's only one Democrat who is, has any significance in America? The other, like mm-hmm. if you gave me the top 12 influential politicians, the Obama and 11 Republicans, there's no other Democrat that can do anything. Mm-hmm. They're all wimps. They, they, you know, no, no one's making news. It's a bunch of Republicans slamming each other all the time, doing all this outrageous stuff for the debates. All the stars are Republicans. All the headlines are Republican headlines. So you have to, you have to do it, and you just have to know that, you know, you know, we don't do anything really hateful or anything. It sort of is, you know, all in good fun. And, and I think our viewers know that we're not, 
making fun of anyone's beliefs. We're just making fun of a person. And Newt Gingrich, you know, mm-hmm. can be kind of scummy sometimes. He's also yeah. got a lot of great ideas, but mm-hmm. you make fun of things just like you make you make fun of everybody. You make fun of your boss. The number one target on our show is Glenn Beck. We make fun of that guy all the time, and it's all in good fun. We just want to make people laugh. We're not, you know, we want to, you know, get some good small government ideas out there. Uh, but we also just want to make people laugh. Mm-hmm. I got to ask you this one. I hope you don't mind or anything. But uh, was there like any person in the field right now that you would lean towards? Like saying, you know, I, I'd probably vote for this guy when it comes down to it. Um, hmm. I don't know. It depends who the final two or three are. Mm-hmm. Uh. Some something in the back of my head that lets me think that there's going to be a third party, someone mm-hmm. who runs. You know, whether it's a Trump or whether it's a Ron Paul, I could even see. Um, his supporters are so fervent. Um, you know, the liberals can't. I know this blows people's minds, but the liberals can't stand Obama because they think he's way too right wing. So I could even see a, I could see a Bernie Sanders type of person becoming a third party candidate. I think it's wide open. I have no idea. Because yeah, uh, I think if you get like Mitt Romney running for the Republican nomination, you could probably see Ron Paul come into the third party. But if I think if you get Ron Paul as the Republican nomination, if somehow that happened, you would probably see mm-hmm. Trump run as the third party nomination or whatever. You could see uh, probably that, and obviously that would uh, split the ticket and uh, hurt the one side or whatever. If the Bernie Sanders run on the Democrat, that could split that side, or either way, it could happen. Is there any yeah, candidate? For sure. mm-hmm. Is there any candidate that you would? Say if it came down to a, uh, I'll just put four candidates out there. If you had to choose from any of them, uh, yeah, Mitt Romney, Ron Paul, Newt Gingrich, or Rick Santorum, which one would you choose if you had a something mm-hmm. like a gun to your head? Um, I guess, I guess I'm a little bit more of a. There's part of me that would vote for Ron Paul. There's a part. Uh, there's a part of me that would vote for Romney. I think he's, uh, you know, I think he, he can be kind of boring, but I think he's. Um, I think he would do a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. You know, I do think he's flip flop for. You know, for political convenience, which a lot of politicians do. Um, I could vote for either the two of them. I could, uh, and Gingrich has some good ideas at, at times. So. That's tough, Jim. I wouldn't vote for Santorum, but the other three I would. All right. Sounds good. Uh, what about you? Hmm? What uh, about you? Uh, probably definitely not the most popular when you say it to people, but I probably favor Gingrich. I like him okay. because uh, I think his platform sounds the most honest when it comes up. Because, I mean, as they as he started out, he was going with the positive campaign. It really wasn't. And he still hasn't got into, like, the sludge or what the super PACs have been doing. But, uh, True. His con- True. He, I mean... With his what he did in uh, New Hampshire, I don't care consider that as some people have said like the dark side of New Gingrich comparing uh, what he's done to like Mitt Romney by like Wall Street Journal standards or whatever. Right. I think it was Wall Street Journal. And that's someone's record. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not dirty. You know, once I go into uh, once I log into AIM, the first thing that comes up, New Gingrich. It has like a dark photo of him going like this to like the camera. And it's like the dark side of New Gingrich unleashed. Right. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Boy, what a flame out. I mean, a month ago, he was like, you know, he seemed the king. unstoppable. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Anybody but Romney, boy, no one wants that guy. Seems like it. Seems like That's it. who it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Somehow this went from uh, from learning about you to a game show, not through politics. I know, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, what else do you want to know from me? Because I actually have a baby. I have to. All right, uh, I'll end off with one last see. question. Actually, some my one friend wanted me to ask this to you, and he said because he's a, uh, he's actually going to college, to become a creative writer and stuff. So he wanted Great. me to ask awesome. you uh, this. He said, uh, if there's anything you could go back and redo, what would you do? And like becoming a writer, if like if you could make any decision again, what would you do? Great question. Um. I would uh, – I'm really glad that I had the education that I did. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Syracuse. Like I said, I got a television, radio, film, writing 
degree, but I took a lot of classes because, you know, you got to have 120 credits to graduate. A lot of, you know, liberal arts classes, so your history and your English and your literature and whatever. And I was so glad that I did those classes. I didn't necessarily care about the grades because you're going into TV, not a lot of people really care if you got a 3.0 or a 3.4 or whatever. They don't care. But um, but I actually learned things in those classes. I was always grateful for um, if you want to be a writer, you need to you need to read, you need to know stuff, you need to be able to make references, you have to be able to know, you know, who a historical figure is, you know, especially in comedy when you know everything is sort of you're making references. So I was always glad for the education that I had. But the one thing I would do over is write more. You know, everyone who says they're a writer doesn't write enough. Like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a writer, and no, oh, but I, no, I play Skyrim. I'll write tomorrow, and that's. A month later, you're like, oh, I'm 80% complete. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I did. I've done too much of that in my life, and I, I wish. Um, I think for the ability that I have, uh, I think I potentially have or do have or whatever. Um, I should have written more. Mm -hmm. I should have. I should have more finished screenplays. I should have more material ready to go. And um, that was the thing that Jay Leno told me in 1994. He said, you know, I said, what, what was the one thing you would tell any writer? And he said, well, you know, uh, I throw this in the news. Um, uh, write. He's just like, write. You have to write more. Um, you just have to do it, man. You just have to write. So, that sounds good. So uh, That's the only way you'll get better. True pleasure having you on, uh, Jack. And I, Who knows, maybe this may happen again or whatever. But uh, true pleasure. I uh, hope to, uh, like I said, maybe some other time. Uh, take care and uh, thank you for coming on and uh, being with the 4 for fans today it was my pleasure great job All right. and tell your friends to take some 24 hour energy drink <laughs> look at that white too. <laughs> he really yeah. needs it alright thank <laughs> hi I'm Brian Sack host of the BS of A and I wanted to tell you about our exciting new season but instead of just telling you I thought why not show you some highlights take a look Hi, I'm Brian Sack, host of the BS of A, and I wanted to tell you about our exciting new season, but instead of just telling you, I thought, why not show you some highlights? Take a look. Uh, that's exactly what I said about five seconds ago. Yeah, well, that's because that's all we have written for the entire season. Good luck, I guess. The truth lives here.